I'm Jay Johnson. I'm a longtime Letterman staffer. I started with Dave at late night on NBC as an intern. Then I got hired to staff as a production runner in the production department. I was a talent researcher. And finally, I was one of two digital producers with my friend and coworker, Walter Kim. I was a huge fan of Dave before I ever worked there. I would stay up late in college and watch Carson and Dave and sometimes Thick of the Night, but we won't talk about that. There are so many favorite moments on the show, but one uh, segment that I really enjoyed was every year Dave would have a new pick a new catchphrase segment. They were all very silly lines, but once you hear some of these, they kind of stick in your mind. They pelted us with rocks and garbage. <laughs> Sorry, pal, that ain't strudel. <laughs> yeah! It's funny. I hate the itching. But I don't mind the swelling. I'm a sweet little cupcake. Baked by the devil! <laughs> In the summer of 1985, the Today Show decided to do a live primetime broadcast from Rockefeller Plaza. Jane Pauley and Brian Gumbel were in the middle of an interview with uh, Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas from Miami Vice when Dave opened his window, pulled out his bullhorn, and proceeded to interrupt their show. My name is Lawrence Grossman, the president of NBC News. This primetime program was my idea, and I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> I was so excited when I landed a three-month internship. So the first thing I ever remember doing for the show in a production capacity was working on a remote, a live remote, where Dave was in the studio talking to people doing their laundry on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. I tell you what, I'll give you, I'll pay for your wash if you try and oversuds one of the machines. If you try and what? Just try and what? toss in an entire box of detergent. Oh, now, now I understand. <laughs> Over the years, uh, I was lucky enough to be on the show dozens of times, and it was very fun. I just had a, a lot of roles as an extra, and then eventually I started getting some parts with some, some more dialogue. Hello? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It's somebody, honestly, somebody looking for somebody named Mitch. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. Oh, is oh, anybody, that's, is, any, that's for is me. anybody, huh? Dave, that, that's for me. Who? <laughs> Thank you. Hello? Hey, what's up? No, I can talk. Go ahead. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Poker? You want to play poker? I'm all for it. Where is it? Wait, let me write this down. Hang on. 83rd and West End. Got it. Uh huh. Sure. Excuse well, me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, dude, it sounds like fun. I will see you later. All right, bye. Thanks, man. Yeah. I was a huge fan of Chris Elliott and Gerard Mulligan and their comedy bits, so I was excited when they bashed my head in. Hi, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Who's your friend there, PC? I'm getting some more RAM so I can run Microsoft's new operating system, Vista. How's it going there? We should be done in about three hours. Don't you ever make me look bad in front of Mac again! <laughs> Somebody better switch to Sanka. What was fun was, you know, you could come into work on any given day and you'd be cast in peace with like some of the biggest stars of the day. So I remember I worked at a Wendy's with Tim Robbins. I spilled scalding hot McDonald's coffee on Lawrence Fishburne. 
I was Julia Roberts' assistant, and I got chased down 53rd Street by Bill Murray. You can't make up your mind, and yet you say you want to vote for Clinton. No, no, I'm serious. I'm having a political discussion with you. Hey, jerk. Just the way you have to do it sometimes, that's right. I remember we once did a piece called How Many Guys in Bunny Suits Can We Get Into a Fountain? And I was one of several people that put on these bunny costumes with these super big heads that you could not see out of. They were hard to get on and off. Dave sent John Goodman, who was a guest on the show that night, to join us. And he ended up sitting to my right. He was in a very good mood that day. And he was kind of uh, not aware of his own body space. He would constantly kind of nudge me and hit me. and I had to catch myself several times from falling into the fountain and I thought this is how I'm gonna die pushed into a fountain by John Goodman drowning in a giant bunny suit if John gets in there will be standing water on 6th Avenue all the way to the park <laughs> here we go oh hey. oh my god this is you know here's a guy who don't care oh he just don't care you know no, no, no. he's gonna get hurt no, he's gonna get hurt please John oh. In 1996, America Online was all the rage. Hey, Dan, ready for the game? I'm just finishing up here with my new kayaking friends. Kayaking friends on your computer? Yeah, I just got America Online. So how do you get America Online? Oh, well, that's easy, too. You just call their 800 number. I gotta check this out. And they had a lot of money to throw around and they wanted exclusive content for their site. So they made a deal with Dave and the show to have exclusive late show content. AOL had very archaic technology at the time. There was no streaming video. And I remember we tried to put uh, Dave works at Taco Bell as a clip on AOL, but the only way to do it was to use just the audio from that piece and then a series of still images. So the result was like the lamest slideshow you've ever seen. Quit with me. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can repeat that order. You ordered something, a couple of tacos or something, chicken something and a burrito supreme with no meat. She's gone already, Chief. A year after the AOL deal, we moved everything over to CBS.com for the Late Show website. If we were not the first, we were probably one of the first TV shows to have a regular online presence that wasn't strictly promotional, but was actually content from the show, and on top of that, original content. Paul and I are very proud. We have a new thing. It's, a, uh, it's called a website. Ah. Now, what this is, this is something that you have to uh, take your uh, computer, if you have like a PC or a uh, desktop or a, a laptop or a computer of any description. It, I, as you know, Paul, I have one of the original Univacs at my house. You do, eh? Uh, uh -huh. And uh, you're going to need a mouse and you're going to need some uh, uh, hard to bite mega disks. And hard to bite. Yeah, and some modems and, and Windows, of course. And you can dial us up on the, uh, it's called a website, and here's the address, www.cbs.com.com.www. <laughs> com, com, now, what we have there is a website, and it's full of puzzles and games. <laughs> and you can play the puzzles, and you can play the games, and uh, tonight, Paul and I will be in the chat room. Yeah. Paul and I will be in the chat room the Late Show chat room from 7 till, well, till whenever. Just question marks, yeah. We were given a lot of latitude to do what we wanted creatively. And one of the things that we did was to create a daily video series uh, with Dave's cue card boy, Tony Mendez. It was called The Tony Mendez Show. And we did dozens, if not hundreds, of these. And finally, one day, I think it was Lori Diamond, who was Dave's executive assistant at the time, she was watching some of these online, and she thought, these are, these are funny, these might be worthy of the show. So she brought it to Dave's attention, and he ended up airing a couple of them. Do you do any impersonations, you know, in, from the movies and stuff? Uh, I've been here for eight years. I do uh, Jack Nicholson from A Few Good Men. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> Sounded just like him. Uh, my impression is of Sean Connery saying the word pictures. I'm going to say a full sentence, but pictures is the only word that's truly the impression. <laughs> Someone's been taking pictures. I'm sorry, Jenny. Love means never having to say you're sorry. <laughs> Uh, 
I remember two weeks before Dave announced his retirement, we had this meeting with Dave and the producers to discuss whether Dave should be on Twitter. And ultimately he decided, no, he, he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to have to deal with that. And I think uh, in the end, it's probably for the best. I, I don't know how to move it. Uh, that's, what, that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> what do I want to say to Jimmy Fallon? You say just one, one word, I think. What, what do I say? Dude. <laughs> hey, yeah, there it is. Look, right there. <laughs> like watching Edison play with a new light bulb. Yes. <laughs> 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 One of the best things I think we did on the digital side was when we teamed with CBS Radio and Vivo to produce a series of live concert webcasts called Live on Letterman. Pearl Jam, Taylor Swift, Adele, Coldplay. Peter Gabriel performed with an entire orchestra. And for the Foo Fighters, we built a replica of the set that the Beatles performed on when they were on The Ed Sullivan Show. Hands down, my favorite day was when Paul McCartney appeared on the show to perform on the marquee. And I remember after he arrived that morning, he noticed on the hallway was a series of photographs of the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show. And he just started, went over to the wall and he just started looking at these photographs. And it was just this great surreal moment where we were watching Paul McCartney looking at photos of himself as a Beatle on the Ed Sullivan show in the Ed Sullivan Theater. We had to climb through a window in a restaurant uh, above the marquee in order to get onto the marquee. So I was out there and I remember shooting McCartney coming out the window and it was just so cool to see this enormous crowd on Broadway from his vantage point. When the producers were planning for Dave's final broadcast, uh, Walter and I were asked to produce a piece for the final episode of the show. We would follow Dave through a day at work. We ended up shooting Dave uh, arriving for work one day. Dave had a habit of showing up at work at 6 a.m. in the morning. So I remember getting up at like 4.30 that morning, coming into the Ed Sullivan Theater, making sure all the gear was ready and that we were outside in time to catch his arrival. And we shot this just two days before the final show was set to air. Dave decided that he wanted us to reshoot his arrival because he didn't like the hat he was wearing. So we went through the whole motion again. We got up early, we went in, caught him coming to work at 6 a.m. and uh, there you had it. I also think that enough time has now passed that we can be honest and say that uh, a day in the life of Dave was not shot in one complete day. It was shot over several days. That was such a great experience and it was so fun to do that for Dave's final show to be a part of that piece of history. It was just for me the perfect button on a 29 year career with Dave. There's a parade of people coming, and they all say the same thing. Dave, I know you hate this. And they go on to do what he hates. Here's your giant check for 200 damn dollars. Oh my god! No people really do win twice in the Late Show Secret Word Contest. Give him a big kiss, girls. When you 